Do you take beautiful photos? Would you like to make money from those photos? In this video, I'm going to show you 12 different sites that I've made money on from my photos that aren't Microstock. Uh, dude, you only have 10 fingers. What do you mean? I thought you could fix that in post. Oh man, this is video. I can't Photoshop in two extra fingers. All right, well, whatever. Let's get started. Hi, my name is James Wheeler. I'm a landscape and travel photographer, and for over 10 years, I've been posting my photos online to a number of different sites. Now, some of these sites work, some of them didn't. And I'm gonna save you the time from going to the ones that didn't, and I'm gonna show you the 12 sites that I've made money from and let you know how much I've made from each of those sites. Now, none of these sites I'm gonna go over are Microstock. I do post my photos to Microstock sites, and I'm gonna be creating another video on which of, site, of those sites are the best. So if you're interested in that, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button and click the notify bell so you get notified when that video is posted. Now, there's, I'm gonna go through 12 different sites, but you can really group these sites into four different groups. The first group is the big social sites. So these are sites that have a lot of users. They're not just for photographers. These sites I'm talking about Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, Pinterest, those types of sites. Now, although you can't sell your photos directly on their sites, there are ways to make money from posting your photos to the sites, which I'm gonna go through. Next to the photography community sites, the four main sites that I've used are Flickr, 500px, SmugMug, and Viewbug. After that, the print-on-demand sites. Now, these are sites where you can upload your photos, but then you can use the site to sell prints, and they'll actually print it and send it directly to the customers. The two sites that I've had some success with for those are Fine Art America and Redbubble. The last site isn't one that you would think, and they're the free stock photography sites. The ones that I've had success on with those are Pexels and Pixabay. And last, at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through a 13th site, which is a bonus site. And on this site, I've made $320 over three days, but then never made another cent afterwards. And I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Let's get into the social media sites now. All right, the first site I'm gonna go over is one that you've heard of, and it's Facebook. I probably made about $1,000 on Facebook, primarily selling print. So people will go to my Facebook page, they'll like my Facebook page, and then they'll follow me and they'll go through and eventually purchase prints. So $1,000 isn't a lot. I haven't spent any money on Facebook ads though. So one of the things to know about Facebook is a number of years ago, it was much easier to get an organic following on your photography. These days, Facebook has changed, their algorithms have changed, and they really to do well on Facebook these days, I find that you really need to pay for ads. So I'm not gonna spend any time on, on Facebook ads. There's lots of other YouTube videos that I'm sure you can find on those, but that's just one thing to note about Facebook. So I don't really focus it on anymore because I don't really have a budget for Facebook ads. All right, the next site is Instagram. Now, I don't make a lot of money off Instagram, but I had to include it in this list. And if I didn't, everybody would ask, well, what about Instagram? Now, I think you can be very successful in, on Instagram as a social influencer. So really growing a large following with your photography and then basically going to different brands and getting them to pay you to put on posts. Right? But that's not the kind of business that I do. I primarily sell my photos as stock and prints. So I haven't really invested the time to grow my following on Instagram. However, that is something you could do. However, one of the reasons that I haven't done that is I kind of see that in the future, Facebook may change the algorithm so that you have to pay to reach your followers, very similar to the way they did on Facebook a number of years ago. So I would caution people around that, but I think Instagram is a great platform. I do use it. I do, you know, put hashtags on my photos. I do view it and I really do enjoy the platform, but I just don't find that I make a lot of money of it as of right now. Now the next site that I want to go over is Pinterest. Again, Pinterest, very similar. I haven't really invested a lot of time. I did play with it a while back when it first came out and I don't, but I don't post there regularly. However, that being said, what I've found is that people have gone to other sites and they've pinned my photos, specifically Fine Art America. They've got a Pinterest link there, as well as on Flickr, there's a way you can share to Pinterest. And what I see when I look at my stats on Fine Art America or I look at them on Flickr, I find that I get a lot of traffic coming in from Pinterest. So what's happened is people have gone in, you know, pinned my photos on Pinterest. They often pin them on boards. I've gone and looked and they pinned them on boards. They're like, you know, play 
places I want to visit or dream photography locations. And they create these boards and then people follow those boards and they repin them. And it's actually worked out quite well for me, especially for Fine Art America. There's a couple of photos that have gone kind of viral on Pinterest and they link back to my Fine Art America. And although I don't think those are my best photos, I found that they've made a lot of more Fine Art America sales than the other ones. And I think that's true, people finding them through Pinterest. Same with Flickr. People have posted a lot of my photos to Flickr, then they then come back to my Flickr. And from my Flickr, it's easy for them to then come to my my website where they can buy stock photos. So I don't make them directly, but I figure I have made a couple hundred dollars indirectly from my photos being shared on Pinterest. All right, the next site is Twitter. Now, Twitter isn't a very great place to post your photos. You don't see a lot of photographers posting their photos on Twitter, but I have found it's a good spot to get stock sales for your photos. The reason is, is you can post, let's say a landscape photo of a particular location. And then if you tag it with that location, by tag I say put a hashtag for that location. What you'll find is a lot of small businesses will be following that hashtag. And then they'll go in and they're just looking for things to retweet. So they'll go in, they'll see your beautiful photo of their location. Maybe they're a hotel in that location. They'll see it and they'll retweet it to their followers. Okay. Great, that gets you more exposure, but it doesn't make you any money. But what I've noticed is, is that the places that retweet your photos will then often buy those photos later on. So if you think about a small business, like someone who's running marketing for a hotel or running marketing for a restaurant in a tourist location, right? It's probably the same person that's going to be in charge of redoing the website as it is who's managing the Twitter account. So they go and they, they repost your photos. They like your photos. They get some likes on their tweets. Great. But then when they're redoing their website, they think, oh, I like that photo. Let me go and find that photographer and buy a license for it. So I do find that people retweet my photos, end up then coming to my website and buying licenses for those same photos, which is why I say tours are a pretty good medium. Now, if I go back and look at my stats, I think I've made about $300 that I can attribute to Twitter, basically people coming back from Twitter to buy stock photos. But it could be more than that, you know, because they could go through and type it in and I wouldn't know that it came through that route, right? But I find that it is a good, a good medium to get people to come back to you buy stock from your sale from your website. All right, now I'm going to get into the social community sites. Now I'm going to start with Flickr. Flickr was the first site that I started uploading my photos to. Now that was almost 10 years ago um, and things have changed a lot since then. But back then the Microstock sites weren't that good. So a lot of people would go to Flickr if they wanted to buy stock photos and they would search for photos on Flickr, find those and they contact you through Flickr. That's actually how I got into stock photography and selling my photos as stock because people would go and, you know, they kept asking me on Flickr to buy licenses to my photos. So I thought, well, maybe I should upload them to the Microstock sites. Maybe I should set up a website so they could just go there and directly buy them because it was hard for me to receive money. And that's kind of how I started making money from my photos was all through Flickr. Now, Flickr got bought out by Yahoo and kind of changed the platform and things changed. So, you know, about five years ago, I stopped making as much money off Flickr. Um, and I really even stopped using it that much. Recently got bought by Smugbug and I do find myself using it more. They haven't made a lot of changes yet, but the changes they have made I think are good. And because I think Smugmug's a good company and they're gonna keep moving in a good direction. So I, I am kind of trying to get back into Flickr. Looking back at my stats, I think I've made about $2,000 off stock sales that I can attribute to Flickr over the past 10 years. So it's not a small amount. That being said, most of that came more than five years ago. So most of that money came um, earlier on when, uh, you know, when Flickr was owned, uh, was not owned by Yahoo. But that being said, it's still a good platform and I have made some decent money, you know, directing people back to my website and selling stock photos to them. All right, the next photo community site is 500px. Now 500px, I've actually made $3,700. Now, I said that I'm not going to go into Microstock sites and where 500px is today, it kind of is a Microstock site now, but it didn't always be. So I'm still including it in this list. When I started using 500px is because I didn't like the changes they had on Flickr and 500px was a much better place to show your photography. So I was uploading photos there even before they were sold as stock. Okay. And when they first started, 500px first started selling photos of stock. So you could sell your photos of stock through 500px. It wasn't micro stock. Um, if you look at some of my sales here, when they first started doing it, it was like $175 and they were taking, I think 50%. So they were selling for 350 and then I was getting 175 and that was very lucrative for a while. 
But then things changed again, and uh, it was they, they announced a partnership with Getty, um, and they also got bought out by a Chinese company, um, really the Chinese version of Getty, and the prices started to go down. So if you look at my sales now, you'll see that, you know, although there are some higher ones, like in the $50 range, you know, a lot of them are in the dollar or in the cents. So today in 2019, yes, 500 px is more like a micro stock site but it wasn't always that way which is why i kind of included it in this list all right the next social community site is smug mug now right now i use smug mug to run my website which is souvenirpixels.com so i've only been running on smug mug since the summer i used to run it off of squarespace but i found it was just way too difficult to manage the uploading of the photos and the pricing of the photos just took too long on Squarespace and it's really easy to do on SmugMug. So I, I moved my entire website and now all my stock photo sales that aren't on the micro stock sites or other sites, all my sales go through SmugMug. And I have a URL for that, souvenirpixels.com. And so what I do is all of my social sites like Twitter, you know, Flickr, um, Facebook. If anybody ever wants to buy a stock photo or a print from me, I just direct them to Smug Mug and they purchase it from there. And Smug Mug handles all the payment, and I just take receive the payment from Smug Mug. So that's how I'm uh, that's how I'm managing my website. Again, I haven't been using it for very long, so I've only made about three hundred dollars, I think, as of right now. But I will plan to make you know make more money as I keep using it because everything does kind of funnel back there. So all my stock sales that I do direct to the consumers happen through Smug Mug now. All right, the last social community site that I'm going to go over is Viewbug. Now, what Viewbug is is a photography contest site. So what you can do is you can upload your photos and then you submit them to contests. Right now, there's some you can submit for free, or you have to get a a membership where you can kind of submit to all of them. Now, the way that I make money on this is I won a contest once, so I submitted my photos to you know a number of different contests, and one of those contests I was the winner, and I won this little you know portable screen. I'll uh, you know cut over to a video of it now, so you can kind of see what it looks like on Amazon, and this is what it goes for. So I got that screen. I tried it a bit. I didn't really use it because. I never really found there's a time where I have a laptop and I need a second screen. Most of the time when I work in my photos, I'm doing at home on my uh, on my PC, like here behind me where I've already got two screens. So I eventually sold that and I sold it and I made 80 bucks off Craigslist. So again, not a lot of money, but Viewbug is a fun spot. I don't post there as much as I used to. I just don't have the time, but you know, you can, you know, go to these photography contest sites and if you win something that has value, you sell it and you know, that's making money from your photography. So that's a last community site that um, that I've actually made a bit of money from all right the next group of sites is the print-on-demand site so what these sites are is you can upload your photos but then someone can go and buy your photo on something on something that they've printed on so they can buy like a wall print or a t-shirt with it on or like a throw pillow which I made a sale for a throw pillow the other day actually um, and so people will basically go on these sites and you know buy your photos printed on things now there's two primary sites that I've made a bit of money on for this. Um, the first one is Fine Art America. So before I started selling my prints on Smug Mug, I sold them on Five of Fine Art America. And for a number of years, that's where I sent people to buy prints of my photos. So if I look here, I made over that time about $2,500 on Five Fine Art America. So that's basically people coming to my website, you know, looking for, liking my photos, um, wanting to buy a print and then I send them to Fine Art America, they'd buy that print and then Fine Art America sends them the print and then sends me the profit from it. The great thing about this site is you can go through and you can set your prices, so you can decide how much you want to make um, and then you know they just obviously take a cut of it when they print it out but you don't have to manage anything. It's much easier than printing out your own photos. So that was my primary one. Again, I don't really use it as much anymore because I've, I'm using Smug Mug but I still have my photos out there and I still make a sale every once in a while. One thing to note about Find Art America and really both of these print-on-demand sites is that you can't really expect to just upload your photo and start making money. Yeah, you might make some sales one-off, but um, more than likely you're going to need to send people, send traffic to those sites, right? So either from your social media posts, link back, send people to your Find Art America sites or from your website, what I used to do, send them to Find Art America. But that's how you're going to make some, you know, if you want to make in the, you know, a couple thousand dollars in Find Art America, I think that's what you have to do as opposed to just uploading your photos. Okay. 
The other one that I tried was Redbubble. So before I used Fine Art America, I used Redbubble. And what Redbubble is, is a similar site. They have more, um, a longer list of things you can buy. So like Fine Art America really focuses on prints and kind of artwork. Now they have throw pillows and other things. They're kind of adding a lot more iPhone cases, adding more things over time, but they still kind of focus on prints. And I, I, I typically use them more for prints. Whereas Redbubble has a lot of different things. Um, they have t-shirts and just all kinds of caps and all kinds of things in addition to prints. So they do both have both. The reason that I used Redbubble is back, again, a while back, probably like five years ago, I decided to put out a calendar. And they didn't, there was no easy way to do a calendar on Fine Art America. So what I did was I did it on Redbubble. So I went and I created like, you know, got 12 photos, put together a calendar, and then I promoted that calendar through my social media and then I sold uh, sold calendar prints okay so that's what I use Redbubble for because of that I have some photos up there and so every once in a while someone will go and you know find my photo through the search or something and they'll buy something and then the other day um, I actually forgot I had photos up there and then someone bought a throw pillow of one of the beaches that I that I shot and you know Redbubble sent me like 10 bucks from it or something so um, it is good once you set these up although you know as I said I don't have all my photos on there so I probably have only made about $70 I think when I looked it up that's all I made from Red Bull and that was mainly from the calendar sales and then you know small sales after that. All right, the last group of sites is the free stock photography sites. So if you're not familiar with these sites, what they are is you can basically upload your photos to these sites and anybody can use them for free for commercial purposes. Okay, so these sites are getting very popular. If you go into the search engines, you're going to see them pop up if people search for stock photography. Now, and because of that, they get a lot of views. So the first one that I have uploaded to is Pexels, and I've made about $110 on Pexels so far. Okay. And I haven't been doing this for a while. I really started uploading a lot of my older photos more in the, just a couple months ago. So it's pretty new. So $110 in a couple months actually isn't that bad for starting out a new site. One of the crazy things I see about this site is I don't know how they calculate their stats, but if you look at Pexels, I've got like 48 million views on my photos. And that's over a very short period of time. If I look at my Flickr account that I've had for a very long time, I've only got 4 million views. So, you know, how are they getting so many views? I don't know exactly how they're calculating it out, but they do show you very, very big stats. Okay. And if you look here, I'm just trying to look, um, I've got like 300,000 downloads. So <laughs> these sites, they are very popular and they are getting a lot of people going to them and a lot of views. Now, what you'll see is when you go and download a photo, they will encourage you or give you the option to click on a button and donate. Okay? Now, a very small percentage of people donate money, but because such so many people see them, that small percentage adds up. And again, for Pexels, it's about $110 for me. So I do plan on uploading more of my photos to these sites, probably photos that are older, like I'm, my new ones, I'm probably keep on the new stock sites, but I'm thinking about going back and looking at photos that haven't been selling on the other stock sites, just kind of sitting around and not making any money from them elsewhere and putting them on these free stock sites, um, just to kind of give them new life and to share them because they're not really getting any use if nobody's buying them on the other stock sites. Okay. So the first one that I've seen some success with is Pexels. The second one is Pixabay. Now Pixabay, I've made about $70. I haven't um, uploaded as many photos there. I haven't been as active, but again, it's still not nothing. Um, and if you can, if you look there, there's a lot of views on Pixabay as well too. So between these two sites, almost $200, most of that over the past three months, not bad. I think if I uploaded more photos, got a couple hundred up there, then I probably would be able to start making a bit of a regular regular income although it would be small but comparable to some of the other small micro stock sites that I also have my photos on and probably even better than a lot of the micro stock sites that I have my photos on other than the big ones that make me the most of my money okay um, again I'll be doing another video on micro stock sites in particular so just subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to hear more about that uh, you'll get notified when it's released all right, and that's the 12 sites that I promised in the, uh, the title of the video, but there is a 13th site that I wanna talk through, okay? And it's called JVZoo. Now, what this is, is it's called, it's a joint venture software. And what happened was about a year and a half ago, somebody contacted me and said, you know, I've got this massive mailing list of small businesses. What I'd like to do is take your collection of stock photos 
and basically sell them at a discounted rate, sell all the photos at a discounted rate to my mailing list. And it'll be a limited time offer, we'll only do it over three days, and if someone wants to buy it, they can buy it over three days, they'll, get it. they'll be able to download all of your photos, um, and you know, you keep half, I keep half. So that was the deal. And then he did all the work. All I had to do is provide the full res files, the photos. Um, he basically set up the landing page, set up the software, um, set up the mailing list, everything. He did all the work. I provided the photos and he sent it out. And then what happened over those three days when it was on sale, I made about $320. Okay. So if you think about it from the point of, oh my God, you gave away all your photos photos you lost money well those people probably had never heard of me and probably would have never purchased any of my photos anyways right like i don't know who exactly was on his mailing list but it was a limited time offer and over those three days where it was on sale i made 320 dollars, and then after that never made it again so it was a nice kind of short-term bump you know what i mean that's like a lens an extra lens that i didn't think i was gonna get before he contacted me uh but i did use it to buy i think i bought a 50 millimeter uh, lens with it Okay, so that's the last site that uh, you can make money on. If you can find someone who has a mailing list, you could set up a joint venture with them to sell your stock photos online. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Now, I would love to hear in the comments below if there's other sites that you've made money from that are not Microstock because it takes a lot of time to upload all these sites and there's so many of them out there. I have not had a chance to try them all. So I would love to hear about those. That's actually how I heard about Pixabay and Pexels. Someone posted on a blog post that I had and let me know about them and let me know that they were making more money from Pexels and Pixabay than they were from Shutterstock. I tried them out and I had some success with them. So I would love to hear about any successes you've had. Also, if you're interested in this type of video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button. Lastly, it takes a lot of time to upload your photos. And if you upload photos regularly, kind of like I do, trying to manage that with all these sites is very difficult. So I've created a video that shows my workflow for uploading to sites, and I'll put a link to it up around here. Lastly, if you'd like to know how much money I've made over year over year and how that's kind of um, come out with my photography, I created a video on that as well, and I'll put a link down here. Best of luck selling your photos online.